Don't slouch, Mary. Sorry, Mom. You know, this blue is your father's favorite color. You're lucky it looks so good on you. Just washes me right out. I bet I look pretty washed out myself the other night. Didn't I? Now, we agreed on a mid-calf length, right? Mom, please listen to me. I know Daddy told you it was all Sam Kalani's fault, what happened. But that's not right. Don't talk about it, darling. It'll just upset you. I need to talk about it. You need to put it out of your mind. Now, put your arms down. You want to check the sleeves. The left one's longer than the right. <laughs> Nonsense. They're perfectly even. No, they're not. Will you just open your eyes and see what's there? The sleeve is over the knuckles. You fix it. You fix it, please. Mary, will you stop being so dramatic? Now, as far as I'm concerned, the sleeves are fine. You'll just have to manage. Or you can fix it yourself. I need an allowable cause of death. Well, what, what is allowable? Read your handbook, doctor. Pneumonia is not an allowable cause of death. Lobar pneumonia is allowable. Well, as far as I know, Lobar can only be diagnosed at autopsy. Mm. Bronco pneumonia is acceptable. Hey, look, I'm not filling that thing out again. There is no substitute for accuracy in our profession. Malcolm, he died of pneumonia. That's accurate. Oh, Mr. Stanley. Mr. Stanley, are you all right? Huh? You all right? Malcolm, you owe this man an explanation. A big one. Victor, I'm, I'm sorry I'm so late. I'll tell you, it has been one thing after the other today. I understand. Chief of Staff has a lot of commitments. Where's the chemo? Finished. 20 minutes ago. And they're all cleaned up and out of here already. Well, that's a pretty efficient staff, don't you think? It's a fine hospital, Margaret. Well, I know you're busy. Nothing for you to do in here now. Like I said, chemo's over. Emily, why are you mad at me? I'm not mad at you. Well, you've been treating me so funny lately. Since you asked me, I might as well say it right out, George. I don't like the change that's come over you in the last year. I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, but I, I got to tell the truth and shame the devil. A change? What do you mean? Well, Kai. Hi. Until a year ago, I used to like you a lot. Listen, has Mary talked to you yet? No, not a word, except for stuff about the play. I tried, but she still didn't love me. Well, my son just told me something really disturbing. What? She told him that her father's been molesting her since she was 10 years old. Oh, Mary. If it's true, he ought to be taken out and thrashed. Anyway, I had him checked out, and his record is spotless. That's what I've got to know. Do you think it's possible that Mary could have made up a story like this? I don't think so. But with an accusation like that, I mean, that can ruin a life once it's out there and once it's in the air. I know. I know. That's why I came here. Why does your son think she told him about it? Well, apparently things were 
heating up between them, and, and, and she suddenly freaked, as he put it, and uh, the story just started to pour out. Dear God. I don't know what made me I've got to talk to her. Would you like me to be there? Oh, please. Okay, wait a few minutes. I want to wait till the act break, okay? Uh, well, I don't think it's possible to be perfect, Emily. Who well, my father is. And as far as I can see, your father is. And I don't know why on earth you shouldn't be. Well, I feel it's the other way around. I'm not supposed to talk to you, Dr. Kulani. Mary, this is really important. Sam told me what you said to him. Shame on him. Now, I know how frightened you must be. But you're not alone. A lot of kids have been through the same thing you have. I don't know what you're talking about. He told me that your father forces you to have sex with him and has since you were a little girl. Now, if that's true... Sam's a liar! He's a liar! He's a liar! It's not... Sam did it! It's not my father! It's not my father! It's not my father! You wanted to see me, Dr. Judd? Yes. Yes. Um, I wanted you to know that if there isn't a body at Edgar Swanson's funeral tomorrow, you're in a lot of trouble. And there won't be unless you sign the death certificate stat. Victor. Victor, come in. Anything else, doctor? Uh, no. Thank you. Good. How you doing? I, um, uh, I wanted to say goodbye, Margaret. Goodbye? Not so fast. You've still got six more chemo sessions. We're good, but we can't work miracles. We... In the old days, that meant you and me. Now it's me. And... Nurses on the floor, a couple of chemo techs, three or four different residents. I can't even keep track of their names. The medical team at Kamehameha is absolutely exceptional. Now, Margaret, you're exceptional. Or you were. I haven't spent enough time with you this trip to know. Margaret, the first time I was sick, you said I was going to be okay. And you made that happen by being there day and night, 24 hours. That's what helped me beat the cancer. And I'm going to help you again. Victor, missing the chemo was an accident. I promise you I'll be there the next time and the next time. Margaret, I need a lot of time. You don't have any to spare. How much you want to be there for me, it's not possible. Victor, you're my patient. I know, but you weren't my doctor.
and I'm going up to bed. Are you coming along? In a minute, Claire. Morgan? In a minute. Tess, we had a deal. You got to stay up an extra half hour. Now it's bedtime. No excuses. Carolyn Pfeiffer got to stay till 10 p.m. Even on school nights. Carolyn Pfeiffer had bags under her eyes the size of steamer trunks. I wish Carolyn lived here. Me too, honey. Come on. Mom. Come on, it's late. <sighs> Do you have any new jokes? Who's that? A friend, I think. Go on now, upstairs. Hi. Hi. Sorry to stop by so late. It's okay, I'm glad you did. I just can't get Mary off my mind. Mary who? Uh, Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Who are you? Tess. Nice name. Okay, upstairs now. Dr. Kalani and I have some private business to talk about. And you brush your teeth, and I'll be up in a minute. Promise to come? Promise. Swear? Swear. Go on. She's been like that ever since my divorce. I have to make six promises and cross my heart before she'll let me out of her sight. I think basically she's afraid she's going to be abandoned. Well, if you've never let her down. Before, it stands to reason you're not going to let her down now. It stands to reason only if you're not a child. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm spoiling her rotten. I don't think you have a lot to worry about. Nice, nice room. It suits you. Thank you. So, you suppose Mr. Phillips is sitting around with his wife talking about Mary, the way we're talking about Tess? Do you? Nope. But suppose he is. And suppose he has a teenage daughter who wants attention so badly that she takes a fistful of pills and then makes up a cruel story about him. That was no fake suicide. I believe what my son told me. You said you'd come up. You didn't call. I thought I did. Excuse me. Okay. Did you brush your teeth? Uh-huh. Do you have your blanket? Yes, Mommy. Okay. I love you. I love you, too. Good night. Nighty night. You sleep tight, Tessie. I love you. I'm sorry. How old is Tess? Ten. Same age as Mary when it all started. didn't recognize you without your lab coat. Sit down. So, you, uh, 
come here often? You know damn well I don't. Listen, uh, I'm sorry about that, uh, the scores and death certificate. I... I completely understand. Why waste time on paperwork when you can be discovering the cure for something or other? On the other hand, without people to administer tests, without instruments, new procedures, no one would ever discover anything. Patients just don't understand that. I, um, I really blew it with a patient today who hated me. I feel lousy about that. Well, maybe he didn't need you quite as much you think he did. Maybe I have too much on my plate. Speaking of which, shall I do a late supper? I'd like that. And maybe we could uh, dance? What are you doing here? There's some things we have to talk about. You're not welcome. I don't think you'll want your neighbors hearing what I have to say. What do you want? It's about your daughter and something she told my son. Oh, your low-life son who takes 15-year-old girls to hotel rooms? Get out of here before I call the cops. Morgan, what is it? Dr. Kalani, what... There's no need to be polite, Claire. The doctor's leaving. Mrs. Phillips, Mary told Sam that you've been abusing her. Oh, that's ridiculous. Abusing her? Sexually that's abusing a her. That's filthy lie! Hold it! Put your ass Get out of here! Mary? Mary, you get back in your bedroom. This doesn't concern you. Go on, sweetie. We'll be in later to say goodnight. Mary, in your bedroom. Now, please. Stop behaving this way, Mary. Do as you're told. It's true, Mom. And you know it! How oh, dare you! It's not true! Mary? It started when I was ten. A time he took me to Maui to go sailing. That's a, that's a damn lie. That, this is all filthy lies right there! Help me, please. still up. Listen, I just wanted to let you know that Mary's okay. She's at the Kapiolani Children's Center. What happened? Oh, it was quite a scene. It was all true. Oh, Daniel, I'm so sorry. But she's safe now. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Good.